Hello everybody, my name is Mark. Welcome to another one of my investing videos. And in this video, I finally did it. I pulled the trigger and I decided to go long on steel. And this here is my position. If we scroll down right here, these are my three positions right there that you see me waving my mouse over in yellow. And you see right there is a big negative six, $10 strike price weekly puts and you can see they expire September uh, is September the 13th and let's see how much money and also what day that I did that so uh, here they are right here it would have been on uh, August the 27th today is August the 29th and the market opens in about two hours and uh, it's four in the morning 420 in the morning West Coast time I'm on the West Coast and so it would have been two days ago I sold six puts and I got 19 cents a contract took in a total of $102.44 now what does this all mean for me so let me go back to my positions now first of all actually let me go to the charts here and let's take a look at steel okay this here is steel US steel ticker symbol X and this is their all-time chart starting from when they first started way back almost 30 years ago back in 1991 and uh, they had one time where they spiked super high and then they tanked back down to reality and they've just been kind of floundering ever since so steel in general is a stock that I would not buy and hold it as an investment but it's a pretty good stock to trade and I like volatile stocks and I like taking lots of risk with very little money because I like volatility and volatility is a good way that you can make a lot of money in a very short amount of time you can also lose money a lot of money in a very short amount of time okay now if we pull up my drawing screen if you look at this little part right there that's where we're at okay and if I go up to five years there's the line right there that's what we're dealing with and that's what we've been dealing with with the past several months now I first bought 200 shares of steel uh, back in March and let me go to the one year chart and it would have been right around my orig original dollar cost average was uh, $20.66 and so I bought it like right around there okay and I opened up an option caller so I bought 200 shares but I also bought to open two put options and uh, that's a very good thing to do on volatile stocks like this if you're trading shares okay there's lots of ways that you can trade there's tons of different strategies I like to buy shares and buy puts it's it's a more of a conservative approach and shares as you know you can hold those forever they don't expire options expire shares don't and so I uh, bought 200 shares of steel back in March and now here it is up to August and steel has been going down a lot and uh, if we scroll to the five-year chart and let me clear all this out uh, if we look at the charts here steel the reason why I bought steel I was kind of trading off of this middle chart because again if we go to the big picture okay the big picture says that steel is a ranging stock it's not a stock that grows in value but it also is not going bankrupt it's a it's got a, almost a two billion dollar market cap and so I thought it would have been a good time to buy right when it was at the midpoint and so that was the risk that I took initially when I first bought into it and so I was kind of trading off of this middle term chart here and I saw well it hit support three times right I hit it there hit it there and hit it there and so I thought go ahead and go ahead and buy it at 20 and then it's just been going down ever since and now currently it's at ten dollars and seventy cents but even though it's at ten dollars and seventy cents I've made so much money on put options my dollar cost average is not twenty dollars and sixty six cents my dollar cost average is fourteen dollars and eighty cents and that's because I made lots of money on the puts. Now I'm still down because even though my dollar cost is 1480, steals at 1070. So 200, that's four dollars. I'm still down in the red 800, but it's a lot better than if I would have just bought the shares and not bought the puts. I I would be down an extra 1200 dollars. So puts go a long way in protecting you when you're a 
day trader or swing trader or whatever you whatever trader you want to call yourself and so now uh, back to my account here currently I'm sitting on six put options uh, and I have two call options that's a spread that I'm doing and I and I'm not I don't have any short calls and then I have these six put options that I sold to open that's what I want to talk about right now now when you sell to open put options you are basically uh, making an agreement to buy the shares of that stock at, at that price. So I sold the open put options at ten dollars. So what could happen is steel could go down below ten dollars or maybe even close to ten dollars, and then my six put options could get exercised, and I would be obligated to buy six hundred shares of steel at ten dollars a share. Why is that? Because a put option is a contract to sell. Uh, the stock at the strike price uh, of that of that stock option and the strike price here <coughs> excuse me the strike price here is ten dollars and so I am giving because I am the option seller I am giving somebody else the right to sell me a hundred shares per contract and I got six of them and there's the negative sign which signifies I'm selling them uh, 600 shares of steel at ten dollars a share Okay, so when you sell the open put options, you got to think of it like you're buying the stock at the strike price of the put. Okay, now uh, if steel stays above ten dollars, then what will happen is these put options, which I got 19 cents for, will go to zero and I will make that hundred and two dollars. If it goes down to let's say nine dollars, then I end up buying 600 shares of steel at ten dollars a share. And that's not a terrible thing. It, it will dramatically lower my dollar cost average from fourteen eighty down to like eleven dollars and whatever cents. And I probably need to do a little bit of math on that. But I would just take the total money and divide it by the number of shares. Now that, that would give me my dollar cost average. Excuse me. And so if steel did go below. $10 a share, then I end up buying 600 shares of steel at $10. Now let's go back to the chart here, okay? And let's go to a shorter term chart. Let's go to one month, okay? Now this is what uh, prompted me or triggered me to buy into steel. I, I was looking at the charts and I was following this little trend right there. And I was following that right there and I noticed a break. And I thought, well, okay, steel's gone south and it ha has started to go sideways. And that was a big breakout, by the way. That's not a little one. That's a big one. And there was even a little gap right there. And so I thought, okay, I'll wait till the next pullback. And sure enough, the pullback came. And when the pullback came, I thought, well, support's right at about here. So when steel went right about down there, that's when I decided to pull the trigger and uh, sell to open the six puts. Okay. So... The charts told me go ahead and take the chance. Now, uh, I am not advising anybody to do what I just did. It is always risky to go long on stocks that are going down in value. Okay, and the fact is, steel has been going down in value. This is a one-year chart. It's been doing nothing but going down. You know, and uh, there's two ways that you can trade stocks. You can trade stocks that are you can do trend trading, right? You can go short on stocks on a downtrend, or you can try to be a predictor and try to trade on reversals. And the only way to do that is to try to buy at supports or sell at resistances. And so I'm hoping for a big reversal on steel because, again, if you look at the charts, okay, steel is not a stock that you buy and hold for long term. It is a stock that you trade, and it had this one big up, major up. And then, except for those, it has some highs in the 40s, the 40s, and 40s. So I could potentially make a lot of money with my 200 shares. And so that's what I've been trying to do, is I have been trying to predict the bottom. And that is always risky to trade stocks like that. And uh, I haven't seen any records of any reverse splits or anything like that on steel. And uh, I haven't seen any indications of any bankruptcies. But there, there are some bear signals out there. Uh, if, you, if you read up articles on steel, steel is laying off hundreds of people 
at a, at a plant. I think it's in Michigan. And also there's the overall economy going on with the tariffs and the trade wars and also the inverted yield curve, uh, which is in the bonds market. And so those are, 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 are uh, red flags, if you will. So it, what I am doing is risky. But again, I like to trade volatile stocks with a little tiny bit of money. And if we look at my overall money, okay, I have 200 shares of steel. And then I have these uh, these six puts that I shorted. I have I still have my six long puts. And I have my two $15 calls. So my overall risk on my overall value is very small. Okay, so I'm, so I'm risking 200 shares plus the money that I spent on the calls and these two calls I bought for $400 a contract I brought in $130 so I got it down to 270 so I could lose 270 times 2 540 so I could lose 540 plus the 200 shares times 10 is 2000 I'm risking about $2500 maybe a little bit more if you count the cost of the put so so really I'm risking more like about 2600 and and some change uh if i were to break a calculator out i could get that exact number and so i'm not advising anybody to do what i do but i did finally decide to pull the trigger and it's all based on this chart that i've been looking at and again going back to the one month chart it finally had a had a break here and it, and it broke out of its channel and so I decided to make the trade near the level of support. And so, of course, if steel goes down below support, then I have decisions to make. I could buy more put options or I could just close out of my shorts and just hold it. Or I could start selling calls or I could just close out of the whole thing, take a loss. But I don't. I don't feel impelled to do that even if it even if steel did drop because I still think I, on an overall swing trading on, on my personal uh, plan on my strategy that I'm using with the callers and with the charts I think it's okay for me to stay in it and hang in there and it's just gonna take some patience you know there, there's a lot of uh, tornadoes going on out there political and economic tornadoes going on with the trade wars and everything so you just got to expect this and uh, again don't don't bet tons of money you know going back to my account here and this is my Roth you know I got over thirty thousand dollars and I'm only risking a couple hundred shares so uh, again small risk in the hopes of making a big game a uh, big payday for myself but keeping the risk small and uh, it is a risk and it's always a risk anytime you, you, you try to make some money in anything there's always a risk so that's what I want to leave you with today in this video I went long I sold the open six put options on steel, $10 strike prices. They expire September the 13th. That's in about two weeks. And if steel stays above 10, then I make $100. If steel goes below 10, then I potentially buy another 600 shares of steel at $10 a share. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Any questions or comments, feel free to leave in the comments section. I will see you in the next video and have a good day.